the Bai Dendron, the Hong Kong U Innovation and Entrepreneurship Hub. Please hit share right now, tag your friends, tag someone who is interested in this conversation, tell us where you're watching from, also ask questions to our guests on comment sections, or tweet with hashtag HKUIDendron. Our show will start in one minute. Share our posts and show right now. Tag your friends. Tag anyone you know who might be interested in this conversation. We are talking about robot drones collecting ocean trash today. We are on live in Facebook page, Hong Kong U100, Hong Kong U Identron, also on YouTube and on Twitter. Share the post right now, tag your friends, and prepare your questions for our guests. Good evening, everyone. Hello, everyone. It's 8 p.m. in Hong Kong here, 1 p.m. in London, and 8 a.m. in New York. So good evening, good afternoon, and good morning. Welcome to the first episode of Meet HKU Startup Founders, presented by iDendron, the Hong Kong U Innovation and Entrepreneurship Hub. My name is Lawrence Tang, the Senior Manager of iDendron. iDendron is an innovation and entrepreneurship hub of the University of Hong Kong. We locate on first floor of Nose Building. I'm honored to moderate this discussion brought to you by iDendron. This is part of a series for all of us to learn more about the works, the idea of Hong Kong U entrepreneurs and innovators. We are live on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and our homepage, identron.hu.hk. Please share our post right now, tag your friends, tag someone who is interested in this conversation about how to collect ocean trash with robots. Tell us where are you watching from? Prepare and ask your question to our guests on the comment sections and tw tweet with hashtag HKUIDendron. So today we are talking about and taking questions about ocean cleaning robot drones to tackle ocean trash. We have the perfect guests for this topic today. And they are Sihan Gupta and Abbas Elfi. They are the co-founders of uh, Clearbots. Clearbot is a swarm of trash collecting robot that use AI vision to detect and collect trash from water bodies. These robots are fully autonomous, solar powered, and work as a team to remove trash. Also, Clearbot is founded by a group of Hong Kong U engineering students from Hong Kong U. And recently they have won the Global Grand Challenges Summit 2019 in London, and the champion of the student track in the Jumpstarter pitching organized by the Alibaba Entrepreneurs Fund. So let us bring our guests today online. Sihan and Abbas, uh, they are the co-founders of Clearboard and also the grad fresh graduates and final year student from the Faculty of Engineering. So how are you doing? I know both of you have been very busy. So please update us and briefly introduce yourself. Thank you for that lovely introduction, Lawrence. So, um, well, I'm Siddhant. I'm the founder of Clearbot. And uh, I have been an engineer at the University of Hong Kong. I used to study computer engineering and robotics. And uh, we started Clearbot about a year back to try and see if there was a better way to clean the ocean, right? And um, I'm actually calling today from Identron because we're still at work here. Yeah. So yeah, looking forward. Maybe Abbas can introduce himself as well. Sure. Um, hi, my name is Abbas Alvi, and I'm a final year mechanical engineering student at HKU. I just gave my final exam, so I don't know what that means. But yeah, like Siddhan said, we've been working on Clearbot uh, for the last year or so. I'm personally very passionate about our design and using engineering to solve real world problems. So yeah, I think this should be a good discussion. Looking forward to it. Yeah, thank you both. Uh, yeah, BC day is still working late night at, at, at Idendron, even it's 8 p.m. right now. So uh, I, I know you have been, you guys are trying to solve the ocean trash, ocean pollution, but 
why why this problem like tell us more about the problem you're trying to solve what is the context and how serious is it right now sure so actually i would say this is a problem that almost needs no introduction right it's so prevalent around us especially being in hong kong a city that's by the water itself um so really like there is trash pretty much everywhere so i have a, a photograph up um on the screen and you can just see like there's there's bottles and plastic just washing up everywhere in the world and one of the the real challenges is that well of course there's a the trash is in the water but it's it's removing it that's the challenge right so today there are no tools that exist to remove trash from water cost effectively so you the best methods we have today are collecting by hand or using fishing nets right so people go out and you know literally fish out trash from the sea and of course this is super expensive it's extremely slow and it's also very dangerous depending on where you are um on top of that there's the issue that you know water itself is of different kinds so like a lake or an ocean are two completely different uh, water environments and so it's it's very difficult to design tools that work in all conditions so just for some perspective like in hong kong uh, this is how they do trash cleaning right so the the, the government basically tenders boats to go up and down the shorelines with a little net in the front and as you can imagine that this this really is a suboptimal way to collect trash in fact the collection rates are well under 30% there's very poor understanding of what really is in the water where it's coming from how well they're collecting it um and that is the core of the problem we're looking at and mind you again this is not something that's unique to hong kong this is a problem that really it's there in every major city in the world uh every major country in the world uh, especially in southeast asia you know close to where we are i see i see yeah yeah i i i when 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 i i still remember last year when i went to bali for my diving license and you you know the 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 the, the sea is really good but when i when i go dive with my coach near the coastal line i i just feel so sad and really pity about all the trash and plastic and straws and and the plastic bottles are on the water and i i just think why 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 don't they like clean clean that because all all the trash are on on the water it, it shouldn't be that difficult to clean that that stuff so I, i think the problem is like just some of the southeast asia country, country they cannot afford that uh, cost to clean for the coastal lines because and then also the weather problem make, makes the situation even worse So I, I I when I when I work in Iden Dry and I see you guys like really working on the hardware stuff. But I what I see is just a single robot right now. I know you have been working on one single robot, and but you 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 guys want to develop it into a system. So can can you tell right. us more about the system stuff instead of just a robot? Sure. So. Actually, what the we are building our our robot on top of an open source infrastructure called Pixhawk, and what that allows us to do is uh, basically replicate whatever we are building into multiple in in multiple instances. So if we are able to build one robot that works really well, then it is very easy for us to then attach a second robot onto the system, right? Um, what we what we found practically speaking when we were actually trying to test this robot is that. if we can get one robot right getting the rest is much easier uh and that is because the water is such a harsh environment right so realistically if you have something that's working 24/7 365 um in something like an ocean current you need a lot of it, it need, uh, you need to build a, a system that's very robust each individual unit needs to be very robust uh, which is why we started off with one single robot and uh, slowly we're starting to develop the swarm system as well um we actually have a central control unit that speaks to multiple robots using radio can control so we've already uh, set that up have any can you show us the how the zero any pictures uh, the, i have the i'm sitting at my desk so i can pull out some circuit boards if that's of any interest and the system so this is this is our central control unit right I you, see. Can, you can see I what see. that looks like uh let me see if we have i can show you our camera lens well this is this is kind of the camera lens that goes uh to detect the trash and right thank you thank you for that lens so that's a really great example so that photograph there is a really great example of what we envision uh the multiple swarm system to eventually look like i right? see what what are so, the, those those white white boxes standing over there so those are batteries those are actually we we've, we've modeled that similar to a tesla supercharger because 
I think Tesla's in there. Cool. The black one is the solar panel. Yeah. So the idea is that so the robots can run about eight hours um, on a single battery charge, uh, but we're going to need to then once they come back charge them up again, right? So the idea is that the dock is uh, mounted, you know, typically on a beach or like by the water side, and the solar panels are constantly charging up this, the the battery chargers. And so when the robot comes back, it's it's able to charge up in just a couple hours. I see. So, uh, what is the right now? What is the key technology in in your robots right now? Can you expand a bit? From well, I, I guess Abbas can go a bit into the the mechanical side of things. Um, from a software and electronic side, really, we're so we're, for our AI, we're using YOLO. So YOLO is an image detection um, algorithm, AI algorithm. And we're using that to detect and classify the trash that Clearbot collects, right? To generate data on what kind of uh, trash we're collecting. And at a hardware layer, we're using uh, NVIDIA. So NVIDIA is probably one of the, if, if you've anyone's done gaming, you'll know NVIDIA. They, they make graphics cards for computers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, we, yeah. Use the, we use an NVIDIA board for our hardware to actually run a lot of that heavy duty mm -hmm. computing. And uh, finally, our, our, our actual robot built out of, uh, so we, we use the same system that aerial drones use. We've actually hacked that and made it work for the ocean drone, right? So the mm. in terms of a robot, the robot actually thinks it's a flying drone at a constant altitude. So we kind of trick it. And that's how we've been able to easily get a swarm, swarm software to work, um, you know, for our system. Yes. OK. So, yeah. So I, yeah, I can, I can talk a bit about the mechanical side of the robot, and I think Sidhan explained a lot about what the hardware is, but and all of the hardware is actually put onto one of the robots that we are making, and we are designing for flexibility right now. So our robots are pretty pretty flexible in the sense that we can change our things; they're modular, and we're building them out of aluminum right now. Um, we're uh, experimenting with a lot of other different materials, but I feel that going forward, that we have a lot of flexibility, and the actual robot will be. Uh, much better looking and much better functioning in the future. I see. Uh, uh, you you said you, you prepared this image before. So is this your your robot look like right now? So this is actually a little. This is our last version. We are already I see, I as see. of this so week a little bit ahead of this. I see. Yeah. I see. And I I know that you. Your team has been like trying out the the functions and and like whether it's is it feasible or not to get this robot drones on on ocean in Bali, right? Can you tell us Correct. more of that experience? Sure, actually, I can I can share a photograph as well. So uh, when we when we started off, right, the first thing we wanted to do was have a user that's part of our journey. Right. So we, we, we actually went down to Bali and we started to speak to the surf shop owners. So here's a photograph in the bottom right. You can see of the surf shop owners in Bali who we worked with to understand really what are the challenges of collecting trash out of the sea. And what we found is that, in fact, most of them are collecting trash today uh, by hand or with nets. And mind you, for these people, they actually live on the river estuaries where the trash is collecting. And their everyday business, which is renting out surfboards, is affected by the trash in the water. Right. So through their uh, perspective, we were kind of able to understand uh, the challenges of collecting trash. Right. And actually, in Bali, we built, um, I'm going to put that photo up again. We built a radio controlled robot in Bali out of local stuff we found locally. So you can see it's made out of water bottles. We've used a drone because there was no propellers that we could find. Um, but we worked with them to basically create this, this very scrappy robot uh, that would help them collect trash out. And using this, we sort of did this iterative design process to understand really what, what we eventually want to build. And uh, I think the, the top left is, the clo is one of our newer prototypes, right? And that's eventually, cool. starting from Bali, what we've ended up at. So basically, you can like collect all sort of, all sort of trash right as long as it's not too big right yeah of course so there is a, a, a not only too big but there's also a limitation on how small uh, so for example we don't actually do microplastics right uh, our robot is focused around trash that is above half a centimeter in size right above 5 mm in size so that's kind of our range 
but that's it, considering that we're thinking of deploying at you know the estuaries of rivers that is what the majority of the trash there is because it turns into microplastic only much later on i see i see so so basically you are u- using the nets to so you cannot collect the microplastic otherwise you, you so uh and then then next i understand that uh you guys uh, also also got a team right apart you two can you introduce a bit your team so we have uh, there's uh, we have utkarsh who's actually uh, not on the on the screen right now he's in india um, because of I covid see. he's in he's on lockdown uh, there's abbas and i who are both in hong kong uh, right now and so abbas handles a lot of the the mechanical robotic side of things he's he's really good at that product design um utkarsh is our sort of software and infrastructure person like he's 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 been instrumental in building our ai system and actually getting it to work um and i kind of do a balance of the business development as well as a bit of the hardware integration and we've been very lucky over the last uh, you know couple of months because of the competitions we've been to and uh what not we've we've managed to get a really great group of mentors uh, i think the largest group of which are here at hong kong u so we have idendron which is uh giving us office space absolutely essential for a hardware startup like ourselves um on top of that we've got support from the innovation wing so dr kit choi has been very supportive of our project uh professor edmund lam and professor hayden so uh, from the triple e department have also supported us uh, they give us a lot of really good advice and directions of how we should run our project so i think Oh. yeah that summarizes pretty much our team today yes yeah, so uh a lot of your friends are uh, watching right now and then and, and I, i guess a lot of your classmates also watching right now let's let's just go go on a global tour to see who is watching right now uh yes all miranda good friends of mine and also i think it is sehan as well it's been she has been a really great supporter to hong kong you stuff as well and and then is it your friend abbas yeah okay. your class as well and also good facts <laughs> say hand <laughs> your friend so um maybe could, uh, i guess uh, a lot of audience right now got a brief idea of yeah, what you have been doing so let, let us do a call as well please leave your questions to say hand and abbas if you uh, get any interesting idea or questions in your mind right now on the comments and so we can we can easily put it up and then so they can answer it and address the questions um i i'm really interested right now uh, because the idea itself is not that difficult to understand and i also see a lot of videos in in other countries there are teams and people are working on similar solutions like drones on ocean so what makes you so different and and effective so you can outrun them That's a very great question. So I would say there's a few things. Um, the first is that our robots are vision enabled. That we have this AI vision element, right? And what that means is that uh, typically a robot is just going blind, so it's just going up and down the water, hoping to collect trash. While in our case, our robot is actually looking for the trash and then going behind it. And so the percentage of of trash that we collect is much higher than any anybody else uh, globally. The second is that we are sort of looking at this as a swarm system. and the advantage of doing that is that um our system is very difficult to break so for example if let's say because of bad weather or something like sea weed you know one of our robots is stuck that will not affect the trash system overall because eventually you know the rest of the robots are there to collect the trash until that one can be fixed and so this we have a very robust system compared to most of our competitors and i think I uh, the third and final thing would be that we generate a lot of data in the process of collection which nobody else is doing what, what, are, what are the major players and competitors right now who are the good major question competitors? so i think the most famous one is ocean cleanup right like by far yeah. they are by far the most comp- uh, famous um ocean cleanup uh, today has actually they've decided not to clean oceans anymore which is funny uh, but they're focusing on rivers to basically wide rivers so rivers between 10 and 20 meters wide uh, which is a very specific kind of size um so one of our advantages over them the is current the current river is pretty strong the current so it's quite oh, hard of course so it's challenging um, to collect trash over there right no absolutely i mean that's sort of in, inbuilt into our design right so our robots actually have almost 40 kgs of thrust which is pretty high 
right? Uh, I see. How about Aldas? Yeah, I can see Water Shark, Ultra Bowls, and Trash Wheel. Yeah. So, so, so I'd say Wave Shark is probably the closest, uh, you know, in in a vision form to what we have. But Wave Shark also is blind, so there's no cameras on Wave Shark. It's basically just trying to go up and down, hoping to collect trash. Uh, while our key advantage of Wave Shark is a we have a swarm, and on top of that, we have a vision aided uh, guidance system. So right? you're really you you're the boy is the only one work uh, like working with a swarm, right? Yeah, absolutely. We are the only ones really focusing on building a swarm-based infrastructure. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yes, and and I I, I know that uh, right now your stage is still on the product development, right? Working very hard on the, the shape so, and make it feasible and affordable. Yeah. And uh, what what is the technical challenge right now? So yeah, I can talk a bit about that. Um, because you're building a robot that needs to function in um, a lot of different water bodies, we've been designing for flexibility and robustness. Um, with that comes a lot of different te technical challenges. Um, we can we can uh, design for a lot of challenges, but our testing has been able to tell us like where we are, where we've missed something. And over the last year or so, we've done a lot of tests and figured out different things. Um, initially, it was about simple hardware problems that were that were something like the motors breaking or things not being waterproof but we moved on from that and now uh, there are more top level challenges um, especially in the last few months because of covid we lost access to a lot of our just building resources like 3d printing and all of the other resources that you get when you are able to go uh, to a lab and so over the past few months we've actually been working out of our rooms um, i had a 3d printer in my Room for a long while, and Sidan's actually had that in his for the last two months. So we've been trying to cope with that and adapt to that. Um, and I think uh, over the last one one month or two months, we've made a lot of good progress and actually solved a lot of challenges, especially with the bot now being able to function on its own in the water. And that's something that we've been trying to do for the last few months. And yeah, that's a goal we've hit recently. The future challenges I see would be actually integrating the swarm to work together well. It's more of a software problem where we need to figure out what's the best algorithm or what's the best decision making a strategy for a robot to collect trash. And that's something that we'll optimize even when we have built that robot. So yeah, I think overall the technical challenges are becoming uh, more top level. And yeah, we've dealt with a lot of like smaller challenges. So Ren, uh, I know you are using solar power. I'm just like curious that how how do you make sure that your 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 robot like going out to the sea, collect the trash, and make sure they have enough battery to come back. Otherwise, they will become another trash, right? <laughs> yeah, creating. Yeah, that's, no, that's actually yeah. I'll, yeah, I can take that. That's actually a really good question because right from the beginning we wanted to make sure that we didn't create more trash. So we've actually been able to introduce multiple fail safes. We've ha so in addition to having the solar panel on board, we have. Uh, we actually have batteries that are enough to get them back home in case they're stranded. The solar panel can add to that and ideally sustain it indefinitely in water so that the cycle will be like the charge, they work on the water, they keep doing that again and again. But in case the solar panel does break, we have enough battery on board. And in fact, we can add more battery uh, so that they don't actually have to come back immediately. And so we have, um, actually designed to make sure that we're not creating more trash for the ocean, which is the big problem that we're trying to solve. Interesting. So I, I, I always find that your, your solution got so many, I guess, so many bottlenecks, uh, like how, how to coordinate the, the, the drones in the swarm system and batteries. And yes, and when, when it comes to autonomous and everything, Everything will become so so difficult. Like like Uber is trying to do autonomous driving, uh, but I, I think the safety call uh, the concern is uh, less less concern when it's come to ocean. I guess. Uh, let us take a global tour. I, I see a lot of your friends are uh, leaving comments. Yes and yeah. <laughs> it's it's it, Ismail is saying hi Abbas and yeah Alishan, great stuff. Oh, this is your another co-founder, right? Yeah. Yes, <laughs> that is. He's he's having his fun. Yeah. 
So say hi to the lockdown guy. <laughs> cool tech, yes. Because it's from Hong Kong U students and, and the faculty, so it's obviously a cool tech, of, of, of course. Yeah, Holly saying it's meaningful action. And yeah, we also got questions from from Ankit. Ankit is oh, and another senior. It's a senior of you, uh, working on startup. Uh, founder the Planto as well from Idendron. So his question is like they, they love your your cleaning robots, and they want to understand what is the depth cap capabilities of the robot, and does it just go through the service or they can swim itself down to the depth, like looking for trash. Yeah, yeah, so for now we are tackling surface trash. So they're basically subsurface or like um, on the surface and there is a part of the robot that can go down um, and actually reach into the water, maybe to a, let's say 10 centimeter depth. But we are designing this robot to be on the surface and do the best that it can do on the surface. We can make uh, very small changes to actually make it work under the water because we are making it completely waterproof. So in the future, it if we feel that it's a service that we want to provide where we want to be able to go beneath the surface it should be very easy to change it also just to add on to that uh, it's it's actually within the design so if you look at where we've we've we want clear water to be deployed we want it to be deployed on shorelines or in estuaries right and in these in estuaries for example all the the waste that has to sink has already sank the up upstream in the river right so you only get in fact almost 90 percent of the waste is basically floating waste near the estuaries uh before it enters the ocean so it really would be irrelevant for clearbot um at least for its current target locations to to go deep into the water yes great great Re really a clever, clever solution and I, I, in fact, I, I don't see much, uh, how would say that, people working on a more sustainable business model for this kind of uh, social impact solution. Like, could you elaborate, elaborate a bit on, on that part? Sure. So we actually operate with two different business models. The first is very straightforward. It's like a service contract, right? Um, basically, today, like in Hong Kong, you have the, the government, you have typhoon shelters, you have harbors. They're all paying to have water cleaned. And so the idea is, okay, we can go and do it, you know, much cheaper operationally. But one of the things we've tried to look at is in developing countries such as like Indonesia, the Philippines, uh, this is where most of the trash is. And actually they can't afford to clean it out of their own water. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to incentivize corporates and corporations uh, to support this. And how we do this is through a corporate offset program. So just for example, uh, you, you could add, you know, a dollar at the end of your checkout on an e-commerce site to make the packaging of that order plastic neutral, wherein we would remove from the ocean as much plastic as was in your order, right? So it basically becomes net zero. Um, and we're trying to encourage corporates to move to uh, plastic neutral products, um, you know, because their consumers, especially the newer generation would, would actually pay a premium to, to enjoy a product that is not damaging to the environment. So, so our business model is basically for this. So the second part is based around corporate offset because that allows us to scale uh, globally while still concentrate collection activities uh, where it's most relevant. Right now, what is your target pricing, or how how much do you expect to to create a whole system or or the drones? Yeah, because I, I think sure. most yeah, yeah the, the 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 people need that. They probably thinking that afford affordability is the primary concern right right so one of the interesting things is if you look at the corporate offset model we basically charge a corporate about a dollar a kilo per kilo to remove from the sea um, but to the actual community where it is being installed the cost is zero right so what basically happens is that the for us the bill of materials for a robot is under a thousand us dollars which itself is very affordable uh, really most of our costs are operational and r d costs so we're able to recover that through you know literally through operations because a large corporate i mean just for example pepsi probably sells uh you know a few million bottles a year so even if we make a cent per bottle that covers up great great i i i i really like this kind of uh like this rapid innovation and, and and environmental tech and creating impact for 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 the human well-being and this is really meaningful um mission and it, 
really proud of you guys, like the students from the Hong Kong. You're working on this, and uh, I I know that uh, many of our fellow students who are really interested in like starting their own projects are watching the show, and as a, as the seniors, and I know your team is a spin-off from the Faculty of Engineering founded by a group of students and different students are joining in and some of them they quit and you're recruiting new team members. Look, so can, can you share a bit that part of the story, like starting a project in a university setting? Sure, I think I think there's a number of very interesting things going on um, in the university and I'll, I'll be specific to Hong Kong U uh, a bit here. Um, so we actually started this project off out of the Gallant Ho Experiential Learning Fund. So uh, there was an experiential learning fund to take students to Bali. That's how we did our very first pilot. Um, and we and we basically covered a lot of the cost then ourselves, right? Um, the interesting thing about is like when you're a student, you are working with uh, people with you know your friends basically who are going to in one year earn a full salary, but today they're willing to work for you for free. Right, so you have a very big advantage because you can get really, really smart people to work with you, uh, without ac it actually costing your project very much. Um, and I would say that in in the university system, at least in Hong Kong, there's enough sort of grant funding available for you to genuinely take a project, start it, and and make something out of it. How about Abbas? Could you share yeah, think, your experience? Yeah, in, just uh, adding on to the dance. Uh, point about there being enough funding uh, inside the HKU environment. I think HKU has been very generous with its funding for student projects. There's Calento Education Learning Fund. There's actually a whole range of funds that will cater to very specific kinds of service projects or projects in general. I know the Faculty of Engineering has a bunch of uh, student funding. So as, as far as funding is concerned, it's not a problem. I think it's more of um, somebody needs to start that uh, there's a lot in, in the initial phases there's a lot of documentation and that's a that's a barrier of entry but once you get through that phase i think it's more about just sticking to it um another thing that i felt very helpful for us was the fact that we were around each other so hku pro like the ecosystem provided us a lot of like similar minded people so i like me utkarsh and sudhan happen to be in the same space and happen to be interested in the same product. And if we weren't at the university, we wouldn't have been able to find each other. So I think one of the big things that people should look for is like people around you and students around you are your potential teammates for the future. And like there's a lot of there's a lot of skills around you and it's very in the in the real world it's very hard to find people with such different skills around you all the time. So yeah, I think that's a very big advantage of being at yeah, yeah. You, you can see this picture yeah I, I see you guys and then and this is the from the faculty of engineering and you can get talents easily and get the help from from the professor or other alumni or investor through our networks right Absolutely. yeah i think yeah true <laughs> and 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 so uh what next what next what is your next step? So we are basically, well, we're doing a number of things. So the first is we found out, we entered something called the, the World Plastic Data Challenge. We're actually a finalist there now. And we found out that there is uh, even more value potentially to our trash AI classification system uh, than even the robots, right? Because to, to collect, you first need to understand where the trash is. And so we're working on that system. We're trying to enhance the quality of that. Uh, we're also trying to set up pilot projects pretty much wherever we can. Uh, we're trying to set up one here in Hong Kong, uh, as well as one in Surabaya in Indonesia, right? which is in East Java. So over there, we're trying to clean up a river, basically set the system up at the end of a river with the help of the local government and some trash disposal agencies. And um, you know, apart from that, obviously, as we're, we're trying to get more corporate deals. We're trying to look out to see if there are companies interested in uh, uh, sort of offset offsetting their trash and we're, as usual fundraising on top of that right so there's a lot of things going on <laughs> i see i see apart apart from bali do you, have you tried out your solution in hong kong as well right so we've done a, a, a fair bit of testing at deep water bay 
uh, quite a bit of collection there. But then now we're basically trying to set up a, a dock in Lantau, like a permanent dock, um, so that we can we can leave the robot to to autonomously work. Um, and if we, and and if if that actually happens, if we're able to reliably do that, then I think we're ready to uh, start going out to other places and really trying this out in river water, you know, in more currents with more trash. Great, great. Uh, thank you for your sharing today. And we, we have a few minutes left. Uh, so and any like final words to the audience or appeal to the audience? Like, uh, do you need any help, any mentors and or any funding or business partnership? Yes, yeah, just just tell the audience what 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 help you need. Yeah. Sure. So we are always, always looking out for corporate partners. We are always, always looking out for donors who can help us support uh, the ecosystem that we're trying to build. And we're always looking out for opportunities to take our robot out and share more about it. So if you could even just share our website, um, or if you think you could connect us to someone who could help us out uh, in terms of a corporate partnership or you know access to funding, then please, please definitely do so. I think we should have our contact details here. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely get in touch with us. <laughs> Oh, and we also we we also have on our website we have we're labeling the trash AI, so you can donate pictures of trash to us, um, or you can volunteer to label the pictures of trash for us, and that will help make our trash AI better and help you know many communities where that's being deployed, uh, in a in a sort of more scalable way. Evers, do do you have like yeah, any help on the just... technical side? Yeah, for the technical side, I think uh, it's really important for the, I think we're in a phase where the crowd can help us um, contribute to the data set. So if you go to playerbot.dev slash label, you should be able to actually help us label data and um, add it to the repository we have, which will make our AI much better. Um, and yeah, if anyone wants to help help us test it out in the ocean, because we need hands, we need as many hands as we can get. Sure, like, like hit me up. Um, it will be hard work though but it'll be fun. So, so do you hire intern right now <laughs> or, or, or looking for any full time? Or oh, full -time? yes. We are always looking for interns, uh, <laughs> especially right now. Especially right now. We, I mean, if you look at our office, this is full of stuff, right? We are uh, <laughs> uh, working hard. It's a very exciting time to be a uh, part of this company, I can tell you. So if you are looking for an internship, uh, send an email out to that email address. And we'll get back to you super soon. Yeah, thank you, thank you both. Uh, yes, and yes, today is the first episode of the Meet Hong Kong U founders, and we have co-founders of Clearbot. Clearbot is a system with robot drones to help collect ocean trash, and these robot drones are using AI vision, totally autonomous and power so solar powered. And we have two guests today, Sehan and Abbas from the Faculty of Engineering. Sehan is our graduate, fresh graduate, and Abbas is our final year student. Thanks again. So uh, if any Hong Kong U founders is watching this show right now, please reach out to us if you want more people to know more about your idea or your projects. Email to you can see the email at the bottom in the running uh, rolling uh, banner as well. Email us, idandron at hq.hk, so we can talk further, see what we can help. And also, we have a lot of support, uh, incubation program. Also, we have a startup matcher uh, platform as well. You can put up your digital profile over there. If you're looking for partners, co-founders, interns, candidates or any opportunities. We have a lot of uh, projects over there right now. And thanks again uh, to, to all of our guests and Glad to be see here. you next week for the episodes. And uh, yeah, let's say goodbye to our, to our audience. Goodbye. Bye-bye. See you next week and good night everyone.